like God talks. Uh, we need to hear what the Holy Spirit says. From uh, First uh, Kings chapter 19, starting in uh, verse 12, uh, Elijah had run into a cave, uh, and he had hidden himself, and, and there was a fire and an earthquake and all of these things, but uh, God wasn't in those things. And, and then he heard a, a gentle blowing breeze, and, and it says a voice came to him mm -hmm. and said, what are you doing here? And so that's, that's the way the Holy Spirit speaks to us uh, oftentimes as a gentle blowing breeze mm -hmm. you know sometimes it may be different than that but that's what we're going to be looking at uh tonight is that uh, just like a wind we hear something on the wind mm -hmm. and uh, i was raised in uh, west texas and there was mm -hmm. a lot of wind out there and as a a young boy i would go out and feed the horses and the cattle and uh my grandmother lived nearby she lived on a on a hill not not far away and so she would often be out there uh, watching uh, for me to be out there feeding the horses and cattle and uh, she would holler at me when and, and yell to me when uh, when I came out there to uh, take care of the animals and uh, I could hear her words I could hear her voice mm -hmm. uh, on the wind and I, and I recognized it and it wasn't just the wind but it was her voice on the wind and and so I, I think about uh, my grandmother uh, when I think about wind words, because that's the way the Holy Spirit speaks to mm -hmm. us, just like in, just like he did to Elijah in the uh, cave. He came as a gentle blowing breeze, and, and that uh, his voice could go by us, and, and we could uh, miss it. And so we have to be attentive uh, to that, uh, to the voice. Now, there's something... Uh, there's one translation that says uh, in John 15, 7, uh, normally we think about if you abide in me and my words mm -hmm. abide in you. Uh, but, but I like one translation that says if you abide in me and my voice abides Abide in you. In you. So if you're carrying his voice, if you're carrying the presence of God, and I know all of you are because when you were born again, uh, Jesus came into, into your uh, heart. And so you're carrying the Lord and, and you're carrying uh, his voice. And so a lot of people get so focused on uh, the written word, <clears throat> but it, the living word gives us direction for day-to-day -day activities mm. and how to deal with problems. So it's good to study the written word, uh, but we also need to recognize that we need that the voice within us. Because, uh, like I said, in John 15, 7, in one translation, it says, If you abide in me and my voice <clears throat> abides in you, you shall, uh, whatever you ask, it'll be, it'll come to pass. Whatever you ask will come to pass. That's pretty exciting. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's important for us to know that we do have a voice uh, inside of us. <clears throat> and so we were... Um, thinking about the people have been communicating with us in recent days and a lot of them have wanted to talk about their problems and they go mm -hmm. around and around in a circle and, and talking about their problems and talking about their problems it is not a good solution and uh, so our words and what we say are very important and mm -hmm. if we talk to our uh, or talk about our problem, then we're beginning to magnify it. It becomes greater and larger and bigger in our lives. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, sometimes you can talk uh, about your problem so much and worry about your problems and be anxious about your problems that your problem starts talking back to you. Oh, wow. And so at night, you'll be th thinking and hearing about that problem. You'll be anxious mm. about the problem. And that's no solution at all. And what what we've seen with a lot of people is that they don't know how to control their words. They they talk like the world talks. Mm -hmm. uh, they've got these problems, and they talk about the problems. They rehearse the problems, and they they just magnify the problems in their life, and not the solution. And the solution is always Jesus Christ. Regardless of what you're facing, 
Jesus is the answer. Mm -hmm. And so we need to begin to talk the way God talks. And you know, he created the world with his words. Yes, he did. Words are the most powerful thing uh, mm -hmm. in the universe. Uh, what else could create uh, the earth and the uh, the animals and the sun and the moon and the stars? What else could do it? There's nothing else, no other power. Mm -hmm. It's the power, power of God's words. And then if you speak God's word, then that makes you powerful. And you create your world, the world around you by the words that you speak. Amen. So you Amen. look back over uh, the last few uh, years or even months and, and think about what is it that you've been speaking? Well, whatever you've been speaking has created the world you're living in. And if it's a mess, if your world is a mess, perhaps you might need to look at your words. Mm -hmm. uh, how are you speaking? This is a, uh, an important message. I know this is not new to any of us, but it's a time to review. It's a time mm -hmm. uh, for us to, to, to remember and, and to work on what we know to do and make sure we're doing what we know to do. We mm -hmm. want to talk like God talks. Hallelujah. And, and the way we do that, we have to hear what the Spirit says because the Spirit uh, is going to come and He's going to tell us things. Amen. But God wants to talk. He's always talking and He's always talking to you. The issue is, are you hearing Him and are you speaking what you're hearing from the Lord? If, if uh, you are speaking what you are hearing from the Lord, then your world is coming to peace mm -hmm. and, and health and restoration. Mm -hmm. But if you're speaking what the world is speaking, oh, it's chaos. Yeah, it, it's right. chaotic. Uh, it's chaotic out and, there. And confusion. The world is dark and they're confused. Uh, and, and so we can't align ourselves with the world. We have to align ourselves with the Lord and let's talk like God talks. Uh, you know, Jesus, uh, that's what Jesus did. And let's let's follow his example. So Amen. where Amen. I want to start is in, in Ephesians 4. Uh, and, and the way I learned this uh, verse was, let no corrupt communication come out of your mouth. Wow. Let wow. no, that's a, that's a zero tolerance. Oh, wow. zero tolerance oh. and see positive words and negative words and words of faith and words of doubt. Then you're mixing all of those things up. That's not a zero tolerance. This is no corrupt communication mm -hmm. coming out of your mouth. And, and I want Sherry to read this out of a couple of different translations because there's a couple of things that I want to emphasize. Mm -hmm. And so let's read it first out of the New American Standard, I believe. Okay, this is Ephesians 4, 29 through 30. Let no unwholesome word come out of your mouth, but if there is any good word for edification, according to the need of the moment, say that. Okay, let's just pause and think. For the need of the moment. Okay, so, so it's at that moment, you have a word. The Holy Spirit will give you a moment a word for what's important at that moment. Oh, uh, that's what I want to emphasize here. He's going to give you what is important to say at that moment. See, mm -hmm. it's easy to even uh, repeat a scripture or, or to say something good, but it might not be timely. And so the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit mm -hmm. is going to give you a word to speak that's timely in that moment, oh, you know, I think, about, I think about it lunch mm -hmm. and, and I began, we were having lunch with a woman and uh, we, we had talked about a number of topics. And then I just began uh, talking about uh, a, a topic and uh, all of a sudden it just hit her heart. Mm -hmm. it, it hit her heart and I didn't know, I wasn't yeah. intending uh, to bring up something that was deep within her heart. We were just having a conversation. Everything was going fine. She had uh, 
uh, some things she wanted to talk over with us. We were going through all those things. And when she had finished all of her points that she wanted to cover, I just said something that, that came to my mind, that came up out of my spirit. And it, she had to uh, repent she because it was touching her heart. And that's right. Because it dealt with some unforgiveness that was in her heart. I had no idea, but the Holy Spirit did. And so this is a win word. <laughs> it was a win word. I, mm. I, just by speaking it, then we were able to minister to her, minister minister uh comfort of the holy spirit to her so you need to know at that moment mm -hmm. what is it mm -hmm. the holy spirit will and if you listen to the holy spirit you see if you carry his presence if you carry the presence of the lord within you you have his voice within you oh hallelujah hallelujah okay so so that it will give grace to those who hear okay do not grieve the holy spirit by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Okay, now what's interesting here, you, you need to speak what is needed at the moment. And then it said in the next verse, and they tie it together, don't grieve the spirit, but other translations that please the spirit. See, you're speaking what pleases the spirit. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you know what pleases the spirit? The only way you know what pleases the spirit if you've heard what the spirit wants you to speak mm -hmm. oh hallelujah so these two things are tied together mm -hmm. let no corrupt communication come, come out, out of your mouth. mouth and please the spirit Ooh, and the hallelujah. spirit will keep you put a guard over your mouth Amen. you know david asked for a guard over his mouth yeah, that's right we all need a guard over our mouth and the guard is the holy spirit and uh, please the holy spirit that's the only way you can let no corruption Come out of your mouth. You, you've got to be hearing the Holy Spirit. Okay, let, I want to read this out of another translation, the Passion Translation, because there are a couple of phrases here I want to emphasize. And never let ugly or hateful words come from your mouth, but instead let your words become beautiful gifts. Woohoo! That's it. Amen. Right there, I want it. I wanted to emphasize that. That encourage others. Let your words become beautiful gifts that encourage other people. Mm. Have you ever said anything to your family, uh, your spouse, or your children, or uh, another family member that hasn't uh, that hasn't been pleasing, that uh, hasn't been a beautiful gift to encourage them? Yeah. We need to repent. repent. <laughs> we need to repent and of course we all have so yes. let's just repent father we repent yes for right any now any words, words. every word that has come out of our mouth that yes. was not a beautiful we gift to the people we were speaking we repent to repent right now a Lord, beautiful in gift to encourage Jesus. them so i want you to think in the days ahead that your words are beautiful gifts and that's the way they're supposed to be perceived that's Amen. the way god perceives Amen. them that's the way God wants us to perceive our own words, yes. to speak and our words be beautiful gifts to encourage others. Okay, go ahead. Do please. this by speaking words of grace to help them. The Holy Spirit of God has sealed you in Jesus Christ until you experience your full salvation. So never grieve the Spirit of God or take for granted his holy influence in your life. Woo! That's good. Holy influence. See, if you look at your words that you're going to speak, and they're going to be a gift that you're going to give someone, and it's going to bring the influence, the holy influence of the Spirit of God. Oh, that's Amen. a beautiful, yeah, yeah. beautiful passage right there. And I'm just going to tell you again where it is. Ephesians 4, 4, verses 29 and 30, in the Passion Translations. Uh, please meditate on that, that our words are to be beautiful gifts to encourage other people, and it will bring the holy influence of the Spirit of God. I, I can't think of anything Amen. more beautiful. Amen. And if you get nothing else out of the message tonight, yeah. please pick up that and remember and yeah, run with right. it Hallelujah. so that when you speak words they will be 
words of encouragement amen and gifts beautiful gifts beautiful gifts how, how wonderful wow wow okay wow, wow. so now that that's our core uh for the message that's the core verse for the message ephesians 4 verses 29 and 30 but now let's think about how jesus uh how jesus operated and and the title remember I have that phrase and we want to talk like and god, god talks. talks well i wonder if jesus mm -hmm. talked like god talked well let's look at john 12 mm -hmm. verse 20 i mean verse 50, 50 verse 50 let's let's see if he talked like god talks and i know that his commandment is eternal life this is jesus speaking therefore the things i speak uh oh i speak just as the father has told me <laughs> he talked like the father talked Ooh, hallelujah. he only spoke what he heard the father say Speak. I mean, jesus talked like god spoke he heard the wind words Ooh, he heard what the oh, spirit hallelujah. was saying to him and that's what he spoke that's the basic principle for the message tonight we need to hear what the spirit is saying and speak that out hallelujah See, those hallelujah. are the most powerful words they are. you can they speak are. When you hear what the Spirit says, the wind words, the see the Holy Spirit is the wind of God. He's the breath of God. Remember when uh, God created Adam and Eve mm. in the uh, garden, he, he made them out of the dust of the earth. And then what did he do? He breathed the breath, <laughs> breathed his breath into them. And what was that breath? It's the Holy Spirit because how were the scriptures written? They are breathed oh, by oh, the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. They are words breathed oh, by wow. the Holy Spirit. Wow, wow. The Holy Spirit is the wind and the breath of God. Amen. And, that's the, uh, and, and the breath of God. And that's the reason I say these are wind words. When you hear his, you have to hear them on the wind. And, 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 and they're not like written in stone. Mm -hmm. See, you, see you, you have to be attentive to them and and when they come by you have to catch hold of them and say whoo this is a profound uh, word that the mm -hmm. spirit is speaking to me and it's going to change my life it's going to bring life okay. see That's see a, jesus the wind said, has life to it Amen. See, jesus said these words are about life yes oh hallelujah when you spirit get spirit and life but, but now the the letter kills yes but the spirit brings life Amen. and so when the spirit brings the voice of god to you you hear his words then that's going to bring life and when you speak them out those are going to be beautiful gifts of life mm -hmm. that bring life it'll bring encouragement to those who are discouraged it'll bring hope to, to the hopeless us. help to the helpless yeah. it'll bring life healing, healing to Ooh, the sick amen glory to god amen hallelujah now let's look at jesus a little bit further we know first of all he talked like god he he only spoke what he heard god say uh the father and so the next verse is going to tell us what his words are like his words mm -hmm. are spirit and life this is john 6 63 it is the spirit who gives life. The flesh provides no benefit. The words that I have spoken to you, they are spirit and they are life. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And when you hear the wind and the, and the wind words begin to, to rise up in you and begin to blow, then it will, and you speak them out, you bring life. You bring life to anything that's dead or dormant or unproductive or unprofitable, then the wind words will wake it up. Okay. Hallelujah. Now, Paul wrote something that was very interesting and very powerful here. He said, we speak what we believe. And so what is it that you believe? Mm -hmm. I'll let Sherry read this first, and then we'll talk about it. 2 Corinthians 4.13. But having the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believed, therefore I spoke. We also believe, 
therefore we also speak okay so we speak what we believe now if you speak about your problem that's what you believe Mm -hmm. Oh, Lisa, you have a problem. If you speak about your problem, then you believe mm -hmm. that you have a problem. Mm -hmm. So what you're saying comes from what you're believing. So if you have doubt, then you speak doubt. And if you have faith, you speak, speak faith. faith. Amen. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So whatever you're saying, it's because that's what you believe. And if you believe in your problem and you begin to talk about your problem and you, you magnify your problem and you go over and over and over, it gets bigger and bigger, bigger and, and bigger. bigger. <laughs> you magnify the problem mm. because you're speaking what you believe and your words can be positive or negative, positive or faith filled words, the words of the spirit. But this, all this doubt and unbelief, you talk about that, that's negative. Now, what if, what if uh, we speak 50% uh, positive words and 50% negative words? Well, it's just, uh, quagmire. It's like a, a sinking sand. It's nothing you can stand on. You have to stand on the rock of Jesus Christ. And remember our core verse is let no zero corrupt, corrupt communication come out of your mouth. Let There's zero tolerance. I know uh, uh, some of you understand that term of zero tolerance. You if you put a little bit of doubt and unbelief in it, 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 it just all turns to mud <laughs> mm -hmm. it, to be pure. See the, the river of life that flows from the throne of God is pure, pure, pure water. And it's going to bring mm -hmm. life and healing wherever it goes. And so when you've heard mm -hmm. the spirit of God, when you speak those words, it's going to bring life. But a lot of people are speaking what they believe, and it's doubt and unbelief. Right. And James makes a really interesting statement here in James 1. Uh, let's read this about if we speak a lot of doubt and unbelief, what's going to happen. Mm. James 1, 6 and 7. But he must ask in faith without any doubting. No doubting. Mm -hmm. For the one who doubts is like the surf of the sea, driven and tossed, by the wind for that person will not have ought not to expect anything or receive anything from the Lord. Oh, that's a hard, hard yeah, say. That's, yeah. I'm glad James wrote it and not Freddie. Yeah. Yeah. James <laughs> said that, but you know, it was by the breath of the Holy spirit that he, that he wrote it down. Mm -hmm. But if, if some days we're believing and some days we're in doubt going back and forth, then, uh, it says we're just like a, a ship on the sea that on the sea and just driven here and there and we don't know where we're going and and don't think that we're going to get anything from God. Don't think we can get anything from if God. If we waver. If we waver. If go we back waver. Forth, oh, today I'm in faith. Uh, Tomorrow uh, I'm in doubt. When I'm around my believing friends, I'm in faith. And when I'm around my doubting and unbelieving friends, I'm in doubt. Uh, then we don't get anything from God. I didn't say that, but the Bible said that. Don't think you'll get anything from God. We've got to we've got to be standing on the solid rock and speaking the word of God, the living word of God that we're hearing by the Spirit. That's the wind words. All right, Jerry. Well, I just think about what Paul uh, reprimanded Peter, and he said, Peter, you know, when you're with the Gentiles. You you act like the Gentiles. You speak like the Gentiles, but when you're with the Jews, uh, you you act like the Jews, and you and you talk like them. And I you know, and I just consider you know some people uh, when they're with uh, faith people, uh, faith people, uh, believers, they they join into the conversation and they speak faith, but then they get over here and maybe. Uh, in the workplace or with the a worldly um, group of people and they're all talking about the bad economy and they're 
talking about problems with their family and and all kinds of evil and then they just join in that conversation and that's that's wavering and we can expect nothing from the lord oh, uh, when wow. we waver wow oh that's Amen. a that's a tough that's a tough statement right there right now what if we are if we talk like the world what if we're out there in the world doing the things the world is doing and then we come back home and we talk about worldly kinds of things we talk about problems and all the problems and the economy's going down and the and the politicians are corrupt and we just talk about all of these kinds of things and we align ourselves with the world well what how's god going to view that Let, let's read this in james uh, 4 4 i believe mm -hmm. here james 4 4 don't you know that making friends with this corrupt world order is open aggression toward the Lord. Ooh, Ooh. Open mm. aggression towards the world, oh. towards the Lord. If we're friends with this world, if we're talking like the world. Oh, talks, wow, wow. See, this message is about talking like mm -hmm. God talks. Mm -hmm. right. But if we're talking about what we heard on the news, if we're talking about uh, what our uh, friends told us, our neighbors told us about that's going on in the neighborhood or, or going on mm -hmm. here or there or in the churches or what, whatever. If we're talking about those kinds of things, we are aligning yeah, ourselves yes. with the world and we're aggressive against God. We're like a... This a, is open aggression. Open aggression against God if we're aligning ourselves with the world. So anyone who aligns with this bogus world system uh -oh. is declaring war against the one true god Ooh, oh want, my goodness you don't want to do that <laughs> you don't want to declare war mm, against god mm, mm. oh that's just too much oh wow but, wow, but wow, it's, how wow. are you talking see this, this message tonight is and about this is from the trans the the voice uh, okay. translation but, but this message is about how are you talking what how, what words are you speaking and, and it's not just here. I, I know when you're uh, around all of uh, the sisters and brothers here that, that we're all speaking uh, good faith words, but what are you speaking uh, when you get around your spouse or around your children or around your uh, siblings or around mm -hmm. your coworkers mm -hmm. and, and you're listening to whatever all these people are talking about? What, what are you saying then? What are you saying about your problems? What are, what are you saying? It's all about your words and about what you are you saying and, and you know uh paul wrote in romans he said if it's not of faith uh oh if it's mm, not of faith, faith it is sin, sin. Whew, let me say that again mm. if it's not of faith it's sin so have we done anything today that's not been a faith well of course we've all done it let's repent father yeah, we repent, repent for anything we've uh, said, said or done, done. That's not been a faith. faith. And we pray that you cleanse us, us from all, from sin. all unrighteousness. Amen. Amen. And uh and we ask you to forgive us of our sins. Yes, Lord. Us yes, from Lord. all unrighteousness. So that we can come to the throne of grace uh and receive grace and mercy. Amen. Woo, Amen. We're in time of need. This is time of need that we need your grace and mercy. And we should receive yes, it receive right it, now. Lord. Put a guard over Jesus. our mouth. Help us speak like Jesus. Jesus Jesus talked like God. Amen. He only said what God talked. Ooh. What he heard God say. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your words. Your words are a precious gift. A beautiful gift to encourage people. Are mm -hmm. you using them that way? Okay. Now we're going to just close with this uh, passage in Mark. And I know that you're familiar with it. It's Mark 11 uh, verses 22 through 24. And, and so I'll just ask Sherry to read uh, uh, one verse and, and then we'll talk about it and then we'll go to the next one. There's three verses okay. here. Okay. In 22 it says, Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. Okay. So if we have faith in mm -hmm. God, let's Let's talk like God. Oh, Let, hallelujah. If, if he's the person we put our faith in, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Then, then let's be like him. Let's Amen. do what he wants us to do. Let's have faith in God. Now let's go to the next verse, 23. Okay. This is when it's going to get real interesting. 
Truly I say, whoever says to this mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea. This is about your problems. Mm -hmm. When you see mountain, in this case, think of it as your problem. Okay. Now you've got one problem today, and tomorrow you'll have another problem. We've all got problems. And so mm -hmm. let's treat them like this verse says. What do we, we don't talk about them. We do something else. What does this say? Be taken up and thrown into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he is saying is going to happen. It will be granted unto him. Okay. So we're not talking about the problem anymore. We're talking to the problem. Oh, I like that. Amen. We're talking good. to the problem. And it says, don't have any doubt in your mm -hmm. heart. No doubt. Oh, remember, this is a zero tolerance message. Zero mm -hmm. tolerance. Have no corrupt communication come out of your mm -hmm. mouth. And now it's saying, no doubt in your heart. And then you speak to your problem. Hallelujah. Speak to your problem. Oh, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And what no do doubt. you speak to your problem? You speak what the Holy Spirit puts in your ear, you speak out those wind words, and that is going to, to blow the mountain into the sea. Oh, hallelujah. Do you want a solution for something you're facing, some mm -hmm. kind of a problem you're facing? Don't talk about it. Don't talk negatively. Speak, mm, speak to it. To mm -hmm. it. What the Spirit tells you oh, to wow. speak. Those I are the wind that. words. I love and it. And that love will destroy the problem mm, that will mm. bring oh hallelujah oh, jesus on the scene because you have the mm -hmm. voice of god within you That's oh the Holy hallelujah Spirit. and when you speak that oh, manifest god in hallelujah. your situation yes when you speak his words it manifests god in your situation oh hallelujah do you need god in your finances you need to speak these win words that I'm talking about, the words that the Spirit speaks to you. You speak those, and that will manifest God in your finances. Do you need healing? Uh, do you need healing in your body? Amen. Then hear what the Spirit is saying to you about your situation about your body, and you speak those words, and that manifests God in your body and brings healing to you. Now, are you having problems with your relationships with some family members? Well, what are we going to do? We're going to talk about the problem? No. Speak to the problem what you hear the Spirit say. That's on the wind words. Mm -hmm. Talk like God talks. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Talk like, like God, God talks. talks. Hear what the Spirit says. Speak those words with faith, no doubting, zero tolerance. Remember, this message is zero tolerance. You speak all the time what the Spirit is saying. You speak that, and that manifests God in your relationships. Mm, hallelujah. Relationships with your spouse oh, and your children. It's going to turn it's things around. around. It's an intervention of God mm, in your life. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. That's Hallelujah. the way you get it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, that's that's actually what God did with me uh, 29 years ago when the doctors diagnosed me with terminal cancer and said I had six months to live. He woke me up one night or in the middle of the night at 3 a.m. And this the wind words that were coming to me were, I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. I didn't even know where that scripture was in the Bible. I had to get up out of bed, go to my strong concordance and, and look it up and find out that it's Psalms 118 verse 17. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. And those wind words, and I began to confess those wind words uh, and with believing in my heart, speaking it out of my mouth. And that was what was manifested when they cut me from one side to the other. They found no cancer. The Lord had healed me, given me a miracle. And I give him all the praise. Even to this very day, every single day, I give the Lord praise. 
that I am still alive and still moving and I am healthy and I am doing the father's business. And, and so these, your words are so very important. And I believe that that is when we ask the Lord what to bring tonight, what to bring forth uh, in this session tonight, that's what he began to speak to us. Hallelujah. And, okay. Okay, and there's and a final the, verse mm -hmm. here in this passage of Mark 11 what it, that I wanted to cover. Therefore, I say to you, all things for which you pray and ask, believe that you have received of them and they will be granted unto you. Okay. So Hallelujah. what has happened? Well, we believe in God. We speak to it. Then we believe that we receive the answer. Amen. We receive the solution and we have it. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. It, it's very simple. Uh, we have to believe in God. This is all about God. We're talking. We're going to uh, cover how to talk like God. That's what we did tonight. That was the whole uh, title of it, how to talk like God. So we start by believing in God. Then we speak to the problem. We don't speak about the problem. We speak what we hear the Spirit say to us. And then thirdly, we believe that we receive it. You know, uh, uh, years ago, uh, when 9-11 happened uh, and uh, the Twin Towers uh, were destroyed, um, my wife was in uh, Honduras. Out of the country in Honduras. And uh, did you know there were no planes coming back from yeah. Honduras into the United States? Yeah, they time? grounded all of the planes. They wouldn't let anything come in. And where's my wife? Well, she's out of the country uh, when that happened. And so uh, uh, she kept calling the airport uh, uh, day after day, mm -hmm. uh, trying to get a plane to come back into the United States. And she couldn't uh, come back. And so uh, one day, the Holy Spirit, listen to me, the Holy Spirit said to me, receive your wife. And, and so I, I received my wife. Ooh, glory to God. Those were my words. I received my wife yes. back uh, to me. And uh, I communicated with her. I, I texted them. Or, I mean, emailed. Email. I emailed them and said, I have received my wife. Well, she's down there. There's no planes coming back in the United States. They don't let them back in. She just called the airport day after day. But but now God's given us a breakthrough. Hallelujah. <laughs> He's given us a solution mm -hmm. to the problem. And it was with words. Yes. And it was words. And the words were, I received my wife. wife. Now, why, why would I say those words? Because that's what I heard the Holy Spirit say. Mm -hmm. I received my wife. And so I sent those words down there to her that I had received my wife. And so what did she do? Uh, she got up that morning and packed and she went to the airport, although it was many miles away. And tell them the story then. Well, and, and when I got there, I had one, I had Cindy Boatwright with me. And uh, and so I, I told Cindy, I said, get packed. We're going to the airport and we're going to wait for the plane that's going to take us back to the United States. And so we got to the airport and there was one plane uh, that they had released and it was going to New Jersey. And uh, we said, we'll take it. And we had to buy a whole new tickets. And we got on that plane and we we flew over ground well, zero. Well, well, but let me say this, but you didn't even know where the plane was coming. You just knew it was coming to the United States. Oh, yeah. It? Yeah. At first, we didn't know where it was going. We said, we're, we want a ticket on that plane. <laughs> wherever it's going. Yeah, wherever it's going. <laughs> we want the ticket. And, uh, and then we found out that it was going to New Jersey. And we flew over ground zero. We flew over the smoke. And we landed. And um, we had to spend the night there in New Jersey in, in the hotel where the grieving families were. And so we got into our room that night. And we we fell on the floor, face down on the floor, thanking the Lord for getting us back into the United States. But also we were interceding for those families who had lost loved ones. And so, you know, the, the Lord spoke to Freddie through wind words, through the spirit of God. He relayed that message to me and I took it up and, and moved on it. And the Lord manifested himself and got us on that plane 
and got us back uh, to Georgia safely. Okay, but there's another part to that message, uh, to that story, and that is there was a woman that called me while she was in Honduras. Right. And uh, uh, she said uh, that she had some money for us, and uh, she'd never given us a penny. Uh, up until that time, she never gave us a penny beyond that point, but she came uh, that day. I, I told her I was here, and she came over and gave me a check. And you know how much it was? It was the exact amount now, Sherry needed to buy the new ticket. The exact amount. Paid, now, that's yeah, God speaking. Yeah. See, remember when he said, receive your wife. That was the win word. That's going to give a break or breakthrough, give mm -hmm. that turnaround mm -hmm. in our situation where she had tried day after day to get back to the United States, could not. She got it. But not only that, God worked out the new ticket. Amen. And he brought, Amen. Uh, sent, talked to a woman to give us a check for an amount of money that was precisely the amount that Sherry needed to buy the new ticket Hallelujah. so that she could come home. That's Amen. Glory to Amen. God. Glory to God. We need to speak Hallelujah. the wind words Hallelujah. that we're hearing. Those are going to be effective yeah, yeah, in yeah. whatever situation you are in. Let me summarize. Uh, I, I, I finished the message, but let me just summarize so we can understand the most important point. This, we can either talk about our problem or we can talk to it. If we're like God, mm, we'll talk, I like that right we'll there. talk mm, to it mm, mm, and tell it to be removed and mm, get out of mm, our mm, way, mm, be plucked up. <laughs> by the roots Amen. and be cast into the sea. Love it. We can Love talk it. about, oh, we've got all of these big problems and they're just insurmountable. That's talking about it. But when we talk to it, you say, be uprooted and be cast into the, the sea. sea. That's talking to your problem. Amen. And, Amen. And, uh, and, oh, right now, this is what I want you to do. If you have any pain in your body, if you have any anxiety uh, in your mind, if you have any type of thing that has tried any weapon that has tried to form against you right now speak to it speak in to jesus name self. in uh, the name of jesus to say, oh, i speak to my gone. digestive system that it reason. is healthy gone. it is normal jesus. in jesus name, in name hallelujah in speak to jesus. it in jesus name Amen. we speak to any rashes on any bodies Amen. in Jesus name to dry up by the root Amen. and be gone in Jesus name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I want you to know that your problems will respond to your words. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, that's good. <laughs> your problems will respond to your words. And if you talk about your problems, you magnify them and your and problems you receive get, them. Your problems get bigger and bigger. Right, right. But if you talk to your problems and tell it to be plucked up by the roots and be cast into the sea, it will obey you and it will be gone out of your life. Hallelujah. So it's going to respond Hallelujah. to your words, whether they're negative or whether they're positive. Your problems will respond to your words. And what you need to do, the most effective thing that you could do is to hear what the spirit would Hallelujah. say to you and, and and speak those words have zero tolerance of doubt in your heart no tolerance and, and no doubt uh, an unbelief but you speak what god tells you to speak Amen. that's what jesus said i only speak what i hear my father say i only do what i see my father do Amen. and if we act like jesus we're supposed to act like jesus then we're going to begin to speak like jesus we're going to speak win words the words of the spirit of god and, and that's going to remove the problems out of our lives mm -hmm. and, and whatever words you use let them be beautiful gifts to encourage other people yeah I thank love you. that thank Hallelujah. you for being here tonight Hallelujah. thank you 